Hello everyone. Here's a 2D shooter game that I've been working on recently. The game is far from complete and I haven't decided on a title yet. But I thought I'd already start talking about some simple techniques that I use in the game. I'm not much of an animator, so I thought I'd rather leverage my math skills. So I decided to go with a lot of procedural elements, with all animations also being procedurally generated, without using any animated sprites whatsoever. In this video, I'm going to explain one of these techniques that produces the procedural explosions when an enemy is destroyed. So let's begin. The idea behind the explosion animation came directly from this book, a New Kind of Science by Stephen Wolfram. This book has a lot of cool visualizations using finite state machines and other substitution techniques. As I was browsing through this book, a particular kind of graph substitution sequence caught my eye, and it seemed to me that this would make a great explosion animation, with the graph slowly expanding and evolving to the next level of substitution, say every n frames. However, I couldn't find any detailed explanation on how the substituted nodes would be placed relative to each other in the book, but I thought this would be fairly straightforward to decipher. If we carefully observed how the nodes in the graph are being substituted, we see that the shape starts off with a basic tetrahedron shape, observed top down, and four planes act on each of the four vertices to shave off the pointy ends. So essentially each point is replaced by three other points in each substitution step. These three points then connect to the three vertices that the initial vertex was previously connected to. The substitution scheme then ensures that each vertex is still connected to three other vertices in the graph at all times. I implemented the substitution logic in two parts. In the first part, each node in the graph is replaced by three other nodes and the connections of the new nodes are adjusted. Then in the new graph, the nodes are translated along the connected edges to simulate the shaving off of the pointed corners in the equivalent tetrahedral mesh. The vertex substitution logic works as follows. Starting off with our tetrahedron, we have four vertices and six connections, each vertex being connected to the other three. Now we substitute each vertex one by one by adding two new vertices at the same position at the end of our list. For instance, the vertex with index zero is now duplicated twice, and we have additional vertices at index four and five the connections are updated by replacing the original index 0 in any two of the three connections by indices 4 and 5. Finally, we add three other connections between the three new vertices 0, 4 and 5. In the same way, we substitute the remaining three vertices. Finally, once all of the four vertices are substituted, we have 12 vertices and 18 connections after the first substitution step in the new graph. Now, all that remains is to translate the nodes along the edges to simulate the shaving off of the corners. If the nodes are simply translated by a fixed amount scaled by the size of the edge, we end up with some edge crossings as seen in the top-down view. This is not how the original visualization looks, however, and we need to adjust the displacement to fix this. I observed that by using a couple of parameters that scale displacement according to whether we are moving up or down the Z direction, we can get rid of the edge crossings. When we are displacing upwards, scaling the displacement by a factor of around two removes the crossings. While displacing downwards, scaling the displacement by a factor of around 0.8 makes sure that we have enough room for further displacements in future iterations. To make sure that we are moving towards a perfectly rounded explosion, 
it helps to choose the base displacement to be one third of the edge length. If we now animate, we can see a nice rounded explosion. Now to better simulate an explosion, we'll multiply the coordinates of our vertices by a constant factor so that we get the feel of the particles and explosion expanding outward. And again, if we now animate, the explosion expands outward. We can tweak this value slightly to get exactly what we're looking for, or even vary this value randomly for a true procedural feel to our explosions. This looks about right. We can monitor the progress of our explosion by timing the step count of our evolution. Using this progress value, we can progressively reduce the thickness of our connections and multiply our colors by the same value and enable some glow. Now we can enable glow and have the glowing effect as the explosion evolves. And finally, this is how it looks when we animate. So that was it for the simple procedural explosion technique. That's it for this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more such procedural animation content on this channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.